Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Facebook Live. I'm Daphne Walbridge from the First Year Principal, and I help new principals not only survive, but thrive as educational leaders. And I do this through uh, mindful and conscious leadership, through creativity and through connection. So welcome to part two of our five part series on digital leadership. So today I want to talk about websites. Now, if you're just joining me, um, I'd love for you to just give me a thumbs up to make sure you can hear me okay. And maybe just to sign in to let me know where you're listening from, because I love to know where my audience is right now. Yesterday I did a live and I had people from Phoenix and from Nebraska. So there's people from all over the place. Okay, so we're going to talk website. Now, although many schools rely on social media to promote their schools and to talk about um, their mission and their vision and to post videos and to do all kinds of things like that, what I've noticed recently is that many schools do not have a website. Now, some school boards or districts uh, centralized websites and that if, if that's the case for you then this lesson is for you but it's not as critical because you're already taken care of. This lesson is really for principals who are coming into a school where there is no website and solely a Facebook page or an Instagram account. So the beauty of a website is that it is a one-stop shop for parents to go to to access multiple resources and it's a great way for you to paint the picture you want for your school for the community so you know facebook controls a lot of things they they change their algorithms all the time and their the content can be um, shown to certain people and not to other people so you really don't have that control and not everybody has a facebook account so the reason it's important to have a website is that not only is it professional because we are leading schools, but it's a place where you are able to add all kinds of elements that are really important. And I'm going to talk about these elements today. So again, if this resonates with you, give me a thumbs up and you'll notice I have put links in the description box above where you can, you know, that you can check out um, after this talk. So if this is something that resonates with you, let me know and just feel free to take notes as I'm talking because you're going to want to write this down. So there's about five to seven elements that you want in a website. The first element is a welcome message. Obviously, you're the principal. You want to welcome anybody who comes onto your page. And ideally, if you had a professional headshot of yourself along with this message, that would be perfect. So now they come onto the, the website, they see who you are, they can see a nice welcoming message. You're off to a great start. The next thing you want to add could be your school's code of conduct. So the rules and regulations by which your school runs. Okay, so that is another place where you can guide parents and students, depending on their age, uh, to know, you know what is acceptable and what is not within the school. The code of conduct. Another element you're going to want to put in there is a school calendar along with a list of events coming up. So that's also very important. Parents can go there, students can go there and can plan accordingly. You're going to want to add your school's contact information. Very important. Fax numbers, if, if we still use those, uh, emails, um, any kind of contact, even your Facebook and Instagram, all those accounts, you're going to want to put those in there too. And you're going to want to put, this is super important, some photos, some photos of your students throughout the year. Remember yesterday, we're taking photos of our kids. Well, those photos, when you have some time, can also be uploaded to your website. What I recommend, if you're going to put these photos in, once the parent consents to having the photo of the child on the website, will be to Put, put a slide option. So when you're setting up a website, and I'm going to talk about setting up websites later, so don't panic. I know it can sound daunting, but it's not that bad. When you're going to go 
adding to add the photos, you're better to have a slide a, a, a slideshow. So that means that you have maybe three or four photos up on the screen and then it gradually keeps rolling. That way you can have tons of photos in there, but it's not taking up a lot of real estate. So I'm going to give you the link to my school and you can go and see what it looks like just to give you an example. Okay, so if this resonates with you, if this makes sense, please give me a thumbs up or let me know as you're listening what you think of this and, and if it's something that you, you see yourself doing. Okay, or if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them too. Uh, next thing I would recommend is having a page, a section where you offer resources for parents. Now this could be links to blog posts, it could be books, parenting books, um, recipe books for lunches. Again, I have this on my school's website right now. Uh, I lead a JKK school, so being the mother of a nine-year-old, it's I haven't I've been in this situation not too long ago. I know what the pain points are for parents raising kids this age, so I try to anticipate that, and um, I try to put those resources in the that section just for parents so they they see their their needs being met and i see leah's there hello leah so nice to see you wonderful so basically that's very important and lastly and i hope you're writing this down but if not you can rewatch this video uh, a registration link so chances are your school board has online registration all year round. So put that link all over your website. Make sure parents can see, oh yeah, I can click a button and I can register my child. You want to make it very easy for them to do so, especially after they've seen your website. Okay, you have to get a business mindset around this because yes, we're school leaders, but we want the kids in our schools. We want them in our classrooms, right? So you have to adopt that mindset. So those are my tips for creating a website. Now you're probably wondering how in the world am I going to do this? Okay, so what I've used, and I am not affiliated with this company at all, I've had some experience building websites and I've had people um, help me build websites. In the past, I worked with WordPress, which is a renowned uh, website developing program. It's if you don't know anything about websites, it is daunting and complicated and you're going to have to watch a lot of YouTube videos, but it's doable. I recommend, and this is what I use, I recommend Wix and I put the link in the comment box in the description box above. Again, I'm not affiliated with them, but I've used it this year because I can compare what it was like with WordPress and what it was like with Wix. For me, Wix was so easy. It's all cloud-based and I, I received great uh, customer support from them. And it was, you can do a very simple website, very effective website, and you're done, okay? Um, and if you're wondering when you're gonna do this, I did it during the summertime, um, before starting in the fall. I, I, it was a creative project for myself, but if you wanna delegate it to a teacher or somebody in your staff who, who enjoys this type of work, that's also an option, okay? So those are my tips for today. If this something resonates, if this resonated with you, let me know in the comment box and go to the, I invite you to go visit my school. It's Ecole Louis Réon. You're invited to visit and to explore there to gain and get inspiration, okay? So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. So that is part two of five for our Digital Leadership Week. I had a great time today and I can't wait to connect with you tomorrow. Bye for now.